You're the embodiment of a big sack of water, I see. Apparently, we're made up of a lot of water. A lot of embodied energy in water. That's what we want to talk about today. What is embodied water before we talk about embodied water? Well, embodied water and embodied energy is, is all the energy in water that goes into making a product in the first place. So often what we talk about, what we've been talking about mostly with the Energy Diet Challenge, is the amount of energy in water that we use in the operations. The operations of our home, the operations of our products, like the operation of our toilets. <laughs> Oper operation of our toilets. Yeah, I... Ours doesn't use water. Okay? Oh, okay. We're in a different category that way. So embodied energy and embodied water is that, that hidden energy in water we don't often think about. Like, take this laptop for one. Um, there's a lot of energy. This, this laptop uses a certain amount of energy to use it when we plug it in. But there's the embodied energy and the embodied water that goes into actually manufacturing this laptop. That's the like mining. A like a microchip. Yeah, the microchip. That A microchip itself takes, what, 40 liters of water to make a microchip? Yep. Something, we read something like that. But it is the mining of the products, the transport of the products, the, the manufacture of the products, the uh, more transport of the products, more packaging, more shipping, more packaging, more shipping, and then the marketing, and then okay. the distributing, and then the advertising, and then the store. I was going to say, what are you missing? Shipping. Oh, more. <laughs> more. More shipping. shipping. It's amazing how many... How many how many different materials are in something like this that use a lot of water and a lot of energy to manufacture it? Okay. And that's just our, our laptop. So I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little slow here, so let's simplify this. How much embodied water is in an, an apple? Oh, an apple. You mean one of these? Ah, yeah. That's more my style. Yeah, well, I don't really know how much, ener how much embodied water is in this apple, but I know the average for all the apples on the planet is 70 liters. Imagine 70 liters for one apple, but this apple came from our, from our neighbor's tree, and so I imagine it used a lot less water because it's not grown in a desert. When I think of apples, when I think of water, I think of apple juice. Oh, apple juice. Well, we've got some apple juice here that's home canned. So how much of embodied water does it take to make a liter of apple juice? 190 liters. My bladder can't hold all that. That's Make one liter. That. That's only one liter of apple juice. Wow. But it took 190 liters of water to make it. And uh, what was really cool about this apple juice is it came from the, the, right here in the highlands. It came from some apple trees. And it also was made with a press that Gord made from scrap bits of material around here. He, he manufactured our own little apple press. So I don't imagine that this particular uh, apple juice took 190 liters. Yeah. There was no factory that had to be built using a lot of water and a lot of energy. Okay, now I'm a lover of milk. What, what about four liters of milk? Well, here we go. Four liters of milk. This is unprocessed milk gourd. Fresh milk? It's fresh milk. Yes, fresh milk. Straight from, well this is from the goat actually. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this goes to Ontario. You can go to jail for that. Uh-oh, we're going to go to jail. <laughs> I know it. Okay, well, we'll have to change the subject quickly. But just before we do, this milk took 3,500 liters. Okay, so that's got to include that's, the growing of the food for yeah. the cows. It's got to include all the, the care taken of the cows, that's got to include yeah. the transportation of the trucks, the washing out of the trucks from the dairy farm to the processing plant and all the stuff that goes on with the processing yeah, this is That would be for factory farmed milk. Okay. This is not factory farmed milk. This came from the farm just down the road. And it came from goats that get to run around and be goats. So well, I imagine it uses a lot less than 3,500 liters. Well, what about... Beer! Gord, it's not noon yet! It's noon in Where'd you get the beer from? And how come I don't have any? It's noon in Saskatoon. Uh, what's, the embodied wa what's the embodied water to this? 75 liters. Uh, you know what that means? You should drink beer and not milk. <laughs> oh, well, you're getting me hungry, actually. Oh. Is that a piece of homemade bread? Mm hmm. Baked in our cob oven? Mm hmm. I bet that didn't use much embodied water. And sourdough yeast, too. From our own sourdough. From our own rye that we grew. Oh, Gord, that's too much. Mm. Well, you know what an average slice of bread? How much water goes into mm -mm. making your average slice of bread? Mm -mm. 40 liters. 40. One piece of bread. Whole wheat bread. 
Wow. Bread and beer are still better than milk. Would you like some cheese on your bread? Mmm! <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, this is a feta cheese that I made from the uh, raw goat's milk that came from the farm down the road. Mm. And so if this was conventionally processed and manufactured from farm-raised and from factory farmed animals, this cheese would take 5,000 liters of water <laughs> wow. to produce this. That's a lot of water. There's a lot of expense to that. And there's a lot of packaging. But this is my own homemade feta cheese. And it's quick to make. It's really simple. Okay. What about beef? Okay, we're not vegetarians. We're, we're really green and we eat a little bit of meat. Not a huge amount and not every day. But the meat that we do eat is local meat. But in your average factory, factory farmed one kilogram of beef. One kilogram of beef or one? One kilogram of beef. Okay. Yeah, one kilogram of beef. Do you know how many liters of water it would take to produce one kilogram of beef? 15,500 liters. That's a lot. That's enormous. There's no wonder everybody's talking about the huge amounts I of embodied energy and water. I can understand why people have a beef over it. <laughs> this particular beef, or <laughs> you're just bad. <laughs> this particular beef, obviously it's a, this is a pound of beef, not a kilogram. But uh, it came from the farm just down the road with cows that get to walk around and be cows. They're not factory farmed. And so they're the embodied water and the embodied energy in locally produced, more sustainably harvested beef, grown, you know, animals that are loved, given a good life, is a lot less. I don't know what it is. Okay, but... so I'm not chicken to make poultry jokes, but... <sighs> I gotta live with this guy. What about chicken? Because I like chicken. Chicken. <laughs> I just happen to have a chicken. It's frozen. It's what's with the legs? Gord, we raised this bird from a, an egg. <laughs> and but why do they, why do the legs look like that? Why do they like this? Because we haven't got that part figured out. So when oh. it goes into the freezer, it's like this. Okay. <laughs> I know it, it, it takes up a lot more room in the freezer. We're gonna have to figure that one out. We raised a bunch of eggs here and. Uh, out of the dozen eggs that hatched, uh, ten of them were roosters. They were supposed to be laying hens. That's another video. That's another video. Oh, we, we, I can't even talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. Anyways, your average factory farm chicken takes 3,900 liters of water. That's enormous. But nowhere near as much as beef. Hmm. Beef? Yeah, yeah so chicken a, is a really... Right. That's not a poultry mill. Another one in your cap, eh? Another feather in your cap? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we raise our own chickens here, uh, just for eggs, basically, and uh, I don't so, know if we'll do the meat bird again, but we're going to eat this one again, eat this one tonight. So, we've been working on the water that we use in our households, and that makes up a portion of the total embodied water that is part of our lives. Yeah, you came across a study in National Geographic or something the other day that said only 5% of the total water that the average American uses is in their house. The, the other 95% of the water the average American uses is the embodied water. So it's not going to take 3,500 liters to cook this chicken in our house. It takes 3,500 liters to make that chicken ready to cook. Yeah, to make it ready to cook. So in our house we use what, uh, 36 liters of water per person per day just for regular household activities. So what is that uh, per week here? That's 180 per week? Something like know. that. Something like that. Oh, I forget. I'm trying to do math in my head. Yeah. But what we should mention too is that 50% of that embodied water is actually food related. And so when we eat foods that are more local and less processed, like none of this stuff is really processed, you know, very minimally. It's got a lot less embodied me, water. Let me jump in there because we've monitored all the water we use for irrigation. Yeah. We basically use 49 liters per person per day for food production and 36 liters per person per day just for household activities like washing and cleaning. Yeah, so just over... So just over half of the embodied water that our household uses with regards to food and cleaning and other things... Uh, goes to the production of food. Yeah, so just to recap, only 5% of our total water footprint is in our house. The other 95% is all the things we bring into our house, 50% of which is the food. So embodied water is enormous. Just to recap, 
You're going to recap You're better again? off to be <laughs> drinking beer than milk. And local cheese and local apples and local meat. Thanks for that, Anne. That's almost depressing. <laughs> no, it's not. There's solutions. And the solution is to try and deal with things as local as possible. Yep. Local is better. Less processed. Less packaged. And you know what? It's better for your body, too, when you eat less processed foods. You, you, you're drinking beer before lunch. You say it's better for my body. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. We'll see you're, you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>